get up and walk faith and healing stories of healing this is the object of our attention in this lesson but what the author really aims at is the relationship with between faith and healing so are we gonna learn something new in these well-known stories the lesson opens with a memory verse that shows how deep and serious the subject is Jesus said which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk when pain and suffering strike it's very difficult to look at a longer term picture or a bigger picture we want to feel good here and now and this is okay but what is at stake is to be good forever eternally and when we understand this it makes a difference it affects how we approach suffering and healing because it's part of a bigger restoration and restoration is a process mm -hmm. through the study in this lesson we basically look at few stories and the first one is about touching the untouchable mm. Mm. last week myself my wife and my daughter we went to a sabbath school in a toddler's group and it's the season as they say no surprise but one of the girls was having an unstoppable runny nose and watery eyes and the whole looks was screaming virus. The thought of it was just making me pull my daughter away and separate and isolate her from this girl. But I couldn't. I just let go and I let them play together. Was it logical? Was it practical? My daughter got the fever for the next six days and thinking about it even now, if I had to do it differently, if put in the same circumstances, probably I would have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. What if it was Zika virus <laughs> or a very deadly disease? We have to be prudent and cautious. The story is about leprosy and the Hebrew were given instructions not to touch and to isolate for very good reason. But there is a human being on the other side, someone who is suffering, who is agonizing, who needs help and love. Can we become so insensitive, so scared, so preoccupied for own safety to forget that God is in a mission to save us from the greatest of all sicknesses? Our sanitary rules, physical or spiritual, shouldn't keep us apart from those in need. Jesus' mission is to help, to provide comfort and love, to restore people, to heal physically but even more importantly, to heal the heart. We are Christians only if we engage in the same mission. With the next story uh, in a lesson with the Roman centurion, we discover and we reveal the truth of how we all have our own approach and our own angle of understanding the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. A soldier understands the power of command, the power of words. A command can move an army of thousands, immense power. Why not then heal my servant? <laughs> Who was a Roman military officer thinking and believing. No matter how powerful we are, we are all powerless when facing the fragility of human life. The Roman centurion understood this and he also knew who had the power. This is faith. And then Jesus said that such faith he couldn't find even in the church in Israel. Wow! Are we preoccupied with who the person in need is? Is he deserving? The centurion was despised like a leper. But Jesus came to save sinners, sick people. <laughs> Do we have faith? Healing for me is one thing, but casting demons away is a whole new level of power. Or is it? I'm trying to imagine men that are demon-possessed. Never seen one, never been one. Well, as much as Jesus had power to calm down a ravaging storm, equally so and equally strong he was to separate this destructive force, a demon, from a helpless man. But what is most striking for me is that those men had faith in Jesus to do that. Mm. 
whatever our obsessions are, God has power over them. Whatever it is that is dragging us underwater, trying to destroy our lives and our families, Jesus has power over it. Do we believe it? We kind of always know our inner thoughts, inner intentions, our hidden, small, embarrassing stories of our lives, don't we? Usually we try to hide them, try to mask them in a better outcome, a better reality. And we make special efforts, especially when we go in a public places, especially when we're going to meet somebody who's important, because we don't want to be rejected. A man with a spiritually damaged past, paralyzed, threw himself in the mercy of Jesus and the crowd, under the spotlight, naked, tra transparently exposed. Get up and walk, your sins are forgiven, were, were Jesus' words. The man wanted nothing more and nothing less. The last sections of the study raise some serious questions. Are we looking for a religion that responds to what we think that we need? Do we believe to have the right practices? Or are we just trying to follow Jesus? If so, are we ready to leave everything the way we know it, with everything that we have, and really follow Him? Can we allow Him to heal our heart, to heal our spirit, and to take the best care of our physical needs? And then, will we join Him in His mission? This lesson made me ask myself some old but serious questions like, how much faith do I have when I approach Jesus? Am I able to see His power and experience it in my own life? And how much am I ready to let go of what's mine when following Jesus? Get up and walk!